When I was in my early teens, I was reading magazines like Super Rod, Hot Rod, Car Crack, and many others. I noticed one thing. The machinists always had the coolest cars. That's because they're building custom things every step of the way. That inspired me to go into machining myself. Now, at home on a hobby level, I still have a machine. Granted, I don't have the big mills and lathes that I did professionally, but I've got a small one. And you know something? It actually works out pretty good because most of the stuff that I'm building is actually, you know, inch and a half, two inches in diameter and smaller. So let me show you around this guy and I've got an upgrade that needs to be done to make this more useful for the home hobby shop. So this is considered one of those mini bench top machines, which is great because realistically, a lot of the parts that we're making are under an inch in diameter. However, I wanted to be able to turn something bigger. Now I wanna show you this just for scale. That's a one inch piece of stock in the chuck right now. That's as far back as I can go. I'm limited by the stop here on the travel, on the saddle there. So realistically, I'm good to maybe an inch and a half without having to totally change up my cutter arrangement as it is. So the solution is, is that there's a uh, extension made that throws about another inch on this out in diameter, which opens up my ability to turn things, for example, you know, something a little bit bigger, or if I needed to take a uh, chunk of uh, round stock and turn it into a seal driver, uh, for bigger seals like pinion seals, I need to be able to do that. So opening up the travel is the way that I'm gonna go. So let me show you the parts a little bit and let's get going. So straight from Little Machine Shop, this is all the parts that I need to be able to add at least an inch of travel to the cross slide. Comes with all the, the heavy parts that are needed, plus the hardware and any other little fiddly bits that's needed to go with it. So I'm gonna start uh, opening up the instructions and we're gonna take that lathe apart and make it more useful for all the things that I'm gonna do. Somewhere, someone's gonna ask, why don't you just get a bigger machine? Well, for one, I have this one. It's already paid for. All the parts I actually bought mm, about eight months ago before I moved here. And I don't feel like I have the space or structure set up to support a bigger machine at this time. So I'm gonna run with what I've got. Now, if you have the ability to pick up a bigger lathe or a mill, by all means do it. The usefulness that you'll get from them is un real especially if you're building and modifying cars parts everything under the sun they're a great tool to have so this is why i'm going to use this one it's here it's already paid for parts are here it fits what i've got going on and so far it's done everything i've asked it to do within reason because i want more but uh, let's get this installed and see how we do so right off the bat the first thing it wants us to do is to remove the tailstock and I'm also going to remove the tooling and anything that's in the chuck and get that out of the way so we have the best possible access to the cross slide, to the saddle, so that way we can make it more into what it needs to be. So from here, there's a couple of mounting bolts that hold the uh, compound rest to the saddle. So it wants us to remove that. We're going to back this out, and I'm also going to pull the handle and the dial off of the, the handle here. So the next thing I'm going to do is take out the two socket head cap screws to remove this positive stop here and unthread the uh, lead screw. So this next one is just a little bit important. I'm going to loosen up the gibs. The gibs are basically the thing that hold the dovetail because the dovetails are on an angle. That's what holds this side to side in place so that way it's uh, rigid enough to do its thing and maintain a constant solid position. So I'm going to loosen up the gibs and then we're going to slide it off the uh, saddle. The instructions did not say to remove the uh, uh, back sheet metal stop up there. So from here, I'm going to remove the two socket head cap screws, these two set screws, and there should be six, according to the instruction, uh, cap screws along the bottom that hold everything together. So I'm going to start doing that. And supposedly this piece comes off also. Uh, we're just going to watch that real careful and see what happens. So far, this is pretty straightforward. So from here, it's a great time to do a little bit of cleaning, uh, clean up all the parts so that way it goes back together nice and clean. This is a piece of precision equipment. We do want things to be uh, going on the ways correctly. So I'm going to do some cleaning. That way it ensures it goes together the way it's supposed to. So I started getting a little curious and I said, okay, what's the difference between here? What ultimately gives me the greater travel? And the answer is, this is the one that came off. This is the one that's going on. There's an extra inch of this slot that allows the compound or the uh, cross slide to go uh, in and out. So this is the old one, this is the new one, more space, more travel, 
everything seems to go together. I'm not done cleaning. There's still a little bit of cosmoline on top, but I'll get there in just a minute. So from here, it's a matter of bolting the little retainers back to the bottom, and I'll get those adjusted in a second. There's some instructions. I'll go over that in a second. So first off, get this bolted on. So I'm getting it bolted down, and the instructions show that the, uh, the bolts along the bottom, plus you have the two locking adjusters. They want this thing to move smoothly side to side, but not bind up. So I'm going to fiddle with this for a little while and get it to where I want it to be and then get it snug down. After a slightly painfully long amount of time, I got it adjusted where I want it. There's no real play in it and it moves freely. I did put a little bit of oil down on the ways because it's always going to have oil on it anyways. Uh, three in one oil, if you got it for a lathe of this side, something light like WD-40 works just fine. You're going to be wearing it all by the end of the day anyways, so it's all good. Now that's nice and solid. Now to put this guy back into place, which I just moved over here, I'm gonna make sure the cleaning, the clean the mounting surfaces and put it back together. Next up is to put the cross slide on and it is worth noting that there is a uh, adjustable wear surface here. It is uh, controlled by the three uh, adjusting set screws there and the instructions here are pretty much the same as it was uh, for the saddle. You want to adjust it in equally so that way it uh, contacts it uniformly and holds it in place rigidly without being so tight you can't move it. So I'm going to get that far and we'll go from there. Now something the conversion kit doesn't talk about very nicely is it comes with a new spacer. It says install, not pictured. And it's like, well, why? So ideally you have to put the spacer in place to go against that shoulder on the new lead screw and that one sits, oh darn it. Well, I'm gonna find that in a minute. So it all sits in there, sandwiched nicely, and threads into its location there. I'm gonna go find that screw. Success. Now I'm gonna thread it in without dropping anything. This is a left-hand thread, so remember, lefty-tighty in this case, and it'll uh, correspond to that little block in there that uh, controls the cross slide. And then I'll tighten those set screws down. Thread it in, tighten down. Now comes the fun part. The graduation dial has this funny little uh, spring clip, and I'm hoping that if you're this far and you're doing this yourself, you've kept track of that little guy. So what they want you to do is to put this in place and set that on top and then push it into place with a screwdriver. Let's see my screwdriver and survey says I poked myself in the hand. Woo! Look at that. It went together just like it was supposed to. And now I can take the handle, put that into place. I can take this little guy and put him into place. And then I just realized I don't know what size that is. I've been trying to keep track of my Allen wrenches as I go because that was always my undoing professionally was losing track of my Allen wrenches every time I needed them. Found the solution, I was missing the washer, imagine that. So that goes into, this comes back off, that sits over, or this sits uh, under there completely, and now that spaces the handle out so that way the screw can tighten against the handle correctly and tighten everything down. Uh, I kind of wish this was either a spline or a keyway, but uh, nope, it's just a, a simple kind of hold it all together kind of dealy. So we're just going to tighten that down. And now we have a cross slide that works like it's supposed to. Look at that, it's sliding and it's in the crossword direction, so hooray! Apparently I didn't do a very good job of getting it in a position that was useful originally, but, you know, welcome to life. Believe it or not, my hand's tired. There we go! Hooray! Next up is putting the compound back into place and getting it set up so that way it's happy where it's uh, locked down and such. Now, it is worth noting that this is what controls your, uh, your direction if you want to change how this is facing. So, I'm just going to set it right up on a 45. Yes, there is a correct machinist uh, a number here, 
but then that basically matches the angle of the thread, which is not 45. Uh, it's something different. I don't remember off the top of my head, but uh, I'm just going to set up on 45 because most of what I'm going to be doing is cutting 45 degree chamfers, that kind of thing. So from here, we're just going to let's make sure, double check 45. And when I get it all set up, I can always verify uh, with a angle finder 45 degrees as soon as I find my angle finder looks around nope i don't know where it is off the top of my head that's the problem with moving is you never know where things are hiding at so now that that's in place the compound the rest of the compound gets to go on also it has the same kind of arrangement that the uh, uh saddle did i'm gonna get those adjusted into place and uh tighten down correctly so that they move freely and all that good stuff but first a little bit of oil all right, so now we can see how much more room I've got. I can get my fingertip in there, and I can put this guy in the chuck, still have room for the cutter. I know I couldn't do that before. This is about, let's see here, two and a quarter-ish in diameter, plus at least another half inch. So that means I can go all the way out to three and a quarter. Now, that doesn't seem like, oh, that's not a very big diameter. Yes, but keep in mind, most of the little things you do, like alternator uh, spacers and such, Various bits and pieces are well under an inch. This was to give me a little bit more versatility because there are some things I want to make that are bigger than what this thing could handle originally. And at some day I will step up my lathe program and this guy will go for sale. But until then, this is gonna serve me very nicely. So far I'm pleased. Now it is worth noting that these little lathes are not the most rigid thing in the whole wide world, but that's okay. As long as you work within their limitations, they tend to do pretty okay. So I'm going to go uh, start playing with this a little bit, get my cutters figured out, and then I'm going to go build something. So we'll see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Time to go build something.